Hey Go-Getters, it's me, Miss McCarthy, and I wanted to thank you for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast, your 15-day countdown guide to Florida's Fast Map Assessment. Before we dive in, let me quickly remind you of your big three tips for this practice session and when you take the Fast Map Assessment. Number one, read the problem carefully and make sure that you answer all parts of the problem. Number two, use scratch paper to show your journey, also known as showing your work, but journey sounds a little more fun. Showing your journey is huge, y'all, because it increases the chances that you'll arrive at the correct answer. And if you realize that you're making a mistake somewhere, it allows you to backtrack and figure out where you made that mistake. And number three, dig deep and give it your best. You cannot control what the questions are going to look like, but the one thing that you can control is the effort that you throw down. So give it everything you've got. Today, the next day, really every day, and especially on test day. Now that we've got those big three locked in, it is time for you to press pause and work out these problems. Then when you're ready, come on back to check your work. I'll see you soon. Welcome back, go-getters. Let's see how you did. Now, I'm about to show you my journey for how I went about solving these answers, and this may look a little bit different or quite similar to what you have. That's okay, because that's the cool thing about math. There's more than one way to arrive at the correct answer. So without further ado, let's get to it and let's do this thing. We're on day one, y'all. This first problem is a multi-select problem. So we need to go ahead and make sure that we select all the correct answers here. This one says to select all the statements that are true. So the first one says the value of the digit five in 5,240 is 10 times less than the value of the digit five in 41,000. 580. Now this one, I went ahead and I put the digit five right here in 5,240 and the digit five in 41,580. And I said, this is not right because that would be a digit five that's 10 times greater, not 10 times less. So no. For the second one, the value of the digit one in 20,618 is 10 times less than the value of the digit one in 20,186. So we're looking at the digit ones in those two numbers, and the first one is 10 times less. So yes, this is going to be a correct answer here. I'll mark that in just a minute. We've got the value of the digit seven in 700 is 10 times greater than the value of the digit seven in 7,000. All right, we've got seven in 700 and seven in 7,000, and that 700 digit seven is 10 times less, not 10 times greater like the question says, so no. We have the value of the digit three in 731,000, 940 is 10 times greater than the value of the digit three in 73,194. Now I do wanna point out real quick that this is a lot. It's a lot of talking here. And so it's really important that we're taking that information off to show our journey, taking it and putting it onto paper in a similar way to what I've done. That's a great way to be thinking about this. So we're talking about the digit three and the two numbers that were provided. And that first three is indeed 10 times greater. It's in the 10 thousands place, whereas the other one is in the thousands place. So yes, this one is a correct answer. Last one, the value of the digit two in 87,862 is 10 times less than the value of the digit two in 87,124. We've got the digit two here and the two here, and the first two is 10 times less. So yes, this is a correct answer too. So you can see we've got the second answer, the fourth answer, and the fifth answer. So I'm gonna select those, the making sure I transfer my answers correctly. So we want the second one, the fourth one with 731,000, that number, that one. And then the final one with 87,862. Okay, pause the video so you can jot down any notes that you still need to make. And when you're ready, press play to continue. 
This next problem is an equation editor problem. So we are going to use the equation editor tool that kind of looks like a calculator, but it doesn't calculate anything. All right, so this question says, Titan has $146. He wants to purchase shirts for a family gathering. If each shirt costs $9, how many shirts can he purchase? So here is my workspace down here. I've got somebody named Titan who had $146. I wanted to draw this out to make it make sense. And I knew that he was purchasing shirts. Each shirt cost $9. $9, $9. I quickly realized that this was going to involve division because I was going to continue to separate $9 to determine the number of shirts that he can purchase. So here is my work here with 146 divided by nine using the partial quotients method. For my work, I just said, okay, I'm gonna take make 10 shirts, which would be $90, and that would leave me with $56. If he bought six more shirts, that would cost $54 with a remainder of $2. So 16 shirts with a remainder of $2 left over let's, is the answer. But let's go back to the question. It says, how many shirts can he purchase? So we're not going to put six remainder two. There is no remainder button on the equation editor tool. You also cannot buy a fraction of a shirt. So we're not going to convert this into a fraction. Instead, the answer is just going to be the number of shirts that he can purchase. So that would be 16. To do that, we could either tap or type in 16 and the answer would populate right up there. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make and when you're ready, press play. Next up, we have a matching item problem. And this question says to match each point on the number line with its equivalent or equal value. Okay, so we've got some number lines and I can see it's either four hundredths, five hundredths, 40 hundredths, or 50 hundredths. For this first one right here, I said, okay, I know that that fraction represents five tenths because it's on the fifth hop out of 10 total, but I don't have an option for five tenths. So I must need to create an equivalent fraction. So I multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by 10 to get 50 hundredths. So for that one, I'll go ahead and click 50 hundredths. For the next one right here, that is on the fourth hop out of 10. So four tenths would be the fraction represented here, but is there a four tenths option in our matching item? No, we have four one hundredths, but that's not quite what we're looking for there. It's very different to have four out of 100 compared to four out of 10. So what I did was I multiplied the denominator and the numerator by 10 to get 40 hundredths which is right there. So we would select those two as the answers. Pause the video to jot down your notes and when you're ready, press play. Our next question is the editing task question for today where we will complete whatever statement it looks like we've got. So the question says to complete the statement about the triangle below to make it true. And it says the triangle above has, and then we have two options here. We need to answer both of those options by clicking this drop down button and selecting the choice that makes sense. So for the first one, I see, it says the triangle above has one acute angle, one obtuse angle or one right angle. And when I'm looking, I actually see two acute angles right here and then one obtuse angle down below because it's wider than a right angle. I actually use a piece of paper with an edge to figure out if it was wider than a right angle or not. So this triangle above, since we're only identifying one, would be one obtuse angle and two acute angles, two obtuse angles, or two right angles. Well, we determined that the top, the two on the side were two acute angles. Pause to jot down your notes and when you're ready, press play. 
Here is our multiple choice problem of the day, and it says, what is the liquid volume in the measuring cup to the nearest eighth of a cup? So we have to select one. Is it two and one eighth, two and two eighths cups, two and three eighths cups, or two and four eighths cups? Because this is a multiple choice question, only one of them is going to be correct. And I noticed that when I took it, it was on the second little line right there between two cups and three cups, which would make it two and two eighths. So our correct answer is B, two and two eighths of a cup. You would click that one and move on to your next question. But before you move on to the next question, pause to jot down your notes and press play to continue. And finally, we have our graphic response item display question for today. This is kind of like it could, we could go in a lot of places with these types of questions. For this one, we're actually going to be clicking above the number line. So let's go ahead and read the question. It says the lengths in inches of eight insects are shown in the stem and leaf plot. Click the number line to create a line plot showing the lengths of the insects. Now, because this is in a stem and leaf plot already, the data has already been organized for me to transfer it over onto the stem and leaf plot. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully transfer this as we go. So if I were to click, so the first one, we've got a stem of three and zero fourths. So we would have one X here, I'd click that. Then we have three and one fourth. That would be this marking right here. And we have two, three and three fourths. So I'm going to skip over the three and two fourths and put two of them right here at three and three fourths. And you can see that it goes the whole number, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, whole number. One fourth, two fourth, three fourths, whole number. Okay, we have four pieces of data for our stem of three and we've placed four pieces of data onto our line plot. Okay, so next up we have the stem of four and we start immediately with four and one fourth. So we're not placing anything above the four whole number, we're moving over one. So four and one fourth, then we have four and two fourths two times, one, two, and four and three fourths just like that. Just to count again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of data and eight represented on the line plot. So pause the video to jot down your notes and when you're ready, press play. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast. Before we go, let me remind you that practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. And there's still time for you to practice and get these skills locked in. And a great way to do that is to join me on some of my video lessons on Taking on the Best. I'll see you next time, go-getters. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it.